What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan and in this video I'm going to be telling you about the backpacking gear that I 100% wish I would have bought a whole heck of a lot sooner. As a matter of fact, I've got nine pieces of gear we're going to be talking about in this video. And the first one is a piece of gear that even brand new backpackers that I've gone backpacking with will 100% refuse to take this piece of gear because they think for the most part that it's got some sort of a stigma attached to it that like only old backpackers, old people who are backpackers will be using this item. Trekking poles. Trekking poles are super helpful. They will keep the weight off of your back and onto your arms as you're hiking. They have multiple times stopped me from falling, tripping, and getting hurt on trail. Now, I prefer the twist lock pole to the flip lock pole because they're a little bit skinnier and they're a lot easier to slide into the outside of my backpack into a water bottle pocket for easy storage. Number two is an extra collapsible water bladder. Probably my least favorite thing to do when I'm backpacking is filter water. Whenever it's time to do it, I'm almost always completely exhausted and I would much rather take the time to sit down and take a break. You've got to find water, you've got to get to the water, then you have to carry all your water bottles down to the water, then you have to filter the water, and then you have to carry it all the way back up to your backpack, assuming you took off your backpack. But what I found that makes it super easy is carrying an extra water bladder. So all I do is take the water bladder to wherever the water source is, scoop up the water, and then bring that back to where my water bottles and filter are. Usually by a water source, it's pretty awkward to fill up your water bottles because it's rocky or sandy or muddy, and you're gonna have to balance the water bottle the whole time. And I found that it's usually a little bit easier to find less awkward places to fill up your water bottle right near the trail. And the other big benefit is that you get extra water storage if you're planning on having to hike a few dry miles or you're planning on just cooking more at camp. Next on the list is a trekking pole tent. Now, I love a good double wall freestanding tent for a lot of reasons. They have a lot more luxuries. They're usually better with condensation. They have a lot more headroom and they're just easier to set up overall. But I found that I actually use trekking poles on every hike no matter where I'm at. So I figure I may as well put them to use at camp and save weight on my tent. Trekking pole tents are much lighter weight, easier to set up in the rain, and they actually pack up really small. And since I am only pretty much sleeping in my tent, I find that I don't need all the added luxuries of a freestanding tent. Number four, a real pillow. For years, I used one of those blow up pillows at camp in my tent because I just wanted to save the weight, but I never really got good sleep on it. So finally, I realized that my problem was is that I needed to mimic how I was sleeping at home in my tent, and uh, I don't sleep with an air pillow at home. I needed essentially to trick my mind into believing that I was at home so that my body could adjust to sleeping no matter where I was at. So I switched to this pillow and I have never looked back. The next gear item on the list is probably the most important, a satellite communicator. If you follow my channel at all, then you'll know that back in February of this year, I had to get rescued from the North Rim of the Grand Canyon because I got something called rhabdomyolysis. I won't get into the details on it, but I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check it out if you want to. Now, we were lucky enough to have cell service on the North Rim to call 911, but I realized that if it could happen to me, it could absolutely happen to anyone. How many times have you fallen on trail, twisted an ankle, got an elevation sickness, and every time it's happened, you thought to yourself, wow, that was close, I'm glad it didn't get any worse. I know now what worse looks like, and I can tell you that it 100% does happen. So I'm willing to pay as much as it costs to have the ability to reach emergency services if I ever get in a situation like that again. And it's a huge peace of mind for my family because I can connect with them at any time via text message, just like I do when I'm using my cell phone, when I've got cell service. Next on the list is good navigation. How I navigate is by using an app on my phone and the app that I use is Onyx Backcountry and they just happen to be the sponsor of this video. Onyx Backcountry is an app on your phone that works just like a GPS. It will show you exactly where you're at on trail. You can hold the phone out in front of you and point it in any direction and it will point exactly on the map which direction you're going. If you're at a fork on the trail, if you just step off the trail maybe you got to use the bathroom and you've kind of hiked into the woods a little bit and you get spun around you can look at your phone and it will point you exactly back to the trail or in the right direction now if you get their elite membership which is only $99 per year you can actually see private and public lands so you'll know if you're hiking in an area where you're supposed to be or not or if you're camping in an area where you're supposed to be or not. So I'll put a link in the description below for Onyx Backcountry, and they've given me a coupon code for 20% off, which means that it's only gonna cost you about $23 to download the app and use it. Another piece of gear I should have bought sooner is a large enough pot to hold all of my cooking gear. It is frustrating when you have to find your pot 
your stove, and then you have to dig around for your fuel. And then you realize you have it on the outside of your backpack because the last time you cooked, that's just where you threw it because you were too lazy to throw it back in your food storage bag. Not that I've ever done that before. Now the ultralight community loves the Tokes 550 milliliter pot for a couple reasons. It's super lightweight and it holds two cups of water, which is exactly the amount you need for pretty much any freeze dried meal on the market. Now I've used one for many years, but it only will hold a fuel canister and the super tiny BRS stove, which is not my favorite stove. I just don't find it to be super reliable. My favorite stove is the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. It is a little bit larger and a little bit heavier, but I find it to be super reliable. It has a regulator and it also has a built-in igniter. So I decided to get the Tokes 750 milliliter pot because it's a little bit taller and it'll hold a fuel canister and my Pocket Rocket Deluxe and put a lid on it and it's still pretty lightweight. And now I don't have to store my fuel or my stove separately. Number eight, a lightweight chair. There is nothing like having a great, comfortable place to sit when you get to camp after a long hike. Now they do make foam pads, the foldable ones and the ones that roll up, but they are super uncomfortable in my opinion. All they do is pretty much take the bite out of the ground. So in my opinion, having a lightweight chair is by far the best. Now having a lightweight chair certainly is best, but you're gonna pay a premium for it. So there's a ton of like two pound chairs on Amazon that are pretty inexpensive. But if saving weight is your game, then the Helinox Chair Zero, in my opinion, is the best chair out there, but you are definitely gonna pay a premium for it. And finally, number nine is blister tape. I discovered that most new hikers that I take with me out on trail have zero intention of getting a blister. So little intention actually, that they don't even consider it. And then guess what? They get a blister and then their trip is miserable. Enter. Leuco tape. A blister forms because of the shoe rubbing on your sock and your sock rubbing on your foot. But the minute you put tape on your foot, that's gonna stop all of that rubbing. So the minute you start to feel any sort of a hot spot or any pain at all in your foot, stop what you're doing and bust out some tape and put it on your foot. The reason I love Leuco tape is because this stuff does not come off of your foot at all. It will literally stay on your foot the entire hike. If you've ever used something called moleskin, that stuff lasts for like an hour and then it moves off the blister area and then you're gonna get a blister anyway. All right, I hope that helps you guys out. If it did, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next one.